thank you very much for coming to talk to us. So, um, first of all, could you tell us more about your duties as Deputy Chairman of the Council of Oman and the role which you fulfill? Uh, my duty comes to effect when the Chairman himself is not uh, there. So the, all responsibilities and tasks of the Chairman transfer to the Vice Chairman, the Deputy Chairman, when he's not there. Of course, managing the uh, uh, General Secretary of the, uh, of the Council, uh, of course, uh, chairing the uh, sessions of the Council, uh, chairing also the Office of the Council. The Office consists of uh, nine members. Chairman, two deputies, and six uh, elected members. Uh, you, uh, the, the office acts as a, a small uh, management, executive management for the whole council. So the chairman of the council and the two deputies manage the uh, the council through the office. Say so whatever responsibilities on the uh, chairman's. Uh, uh, list, you share it with him, and if he's not there, then you take the full responsibility. Okay, okay. and can you explain a bit more about what the council does? Uh, Ashura Council in Oman is a legislative and auditing council. That means it audits on the uh, government uh, uh, work in terms of financial and administration. Okay. And you also uh, participate in the establishment of uh, laws, and you are uh, part of the uh, legislation cycle. Okay, so it, law it comes from the government to you. You study it, review it, and do whatever modifications, and then you transfer it back to the right channels. Okay. So it is. This is from the legislation side, the auditing side. Uh, you have your own uh, tools to audit on the government administration and financial uh, uh, activities. Okay. And what are the biggest challenges that this role gives you? The most challenge is that to go into uh, details of the auditing side mm -hmm. because it's huge work and also in uh, vibrant situation, it's very hard to get yeah, into these little details. Although some details, when they accumulate, become bigger and then explode. So you need to be, uh, I would say, well experienced to spot where the problems are before they you know, get bigger. So that's what, one of the challenges. Besides, you know, challenges, I would say, you know, they, they are part of your experience. They're not big challenges at all. You overcome them. And some of them are opportunities for to, to enhance work, to uh, get be a better performance from the uh, government side. So let's talk about cultural diplomacy. Culture, OK. Yeah. So what do you think about cultural diplomacy as a tool for fostering peace and resolving conflicts? And how is the situation in Oman about cultural diplomacy? There are efforts already taken or it needs to be further developed? We have uh, shared with the audience our uh, initiatives in the cultural diplomacy. And those are examples, uh, I would say they are vehicles which the cultural diplomacy can, can be you know, uh, materialized. So the examples I've, I've shared with the audience are very active and we have gained the fruit of those uh, initiatives. And those initiatives, which are part, of course, of the cultural diplomacy, or they are, they, they, they are the components of the cultural diplomacy, have gained our country the status we are enjoying now, fostering peace, tolerance, coexistence. And we've seen uh, in the recent uh, years the superpowers themselves heading for Oman seeking for advices and opinions to solve problems. And we, Oman, uh, have mediated a number of occasions on, on, on regional conflicts. So that, that, was, uh, that, that is uh, because of the uh, initiatives of the cultural diplomacy that we have fostered from the early time of the uh, 70s, since we have started on the, in, this, in this direction. 
So we are gaining the, the fruits of, of the cultural diplomacy. I, I hope just the, the examples, the, uh, the initiative that we have shared, it can be taught, yeah. can be improved, it, it can be further studied and to see if that can be implemented in other societies as well, other countries as well. It's worth, uh, you know, studying because it's been very successful in our side of the world. So I hope we can uh, share that with other countries as well. So is there a difference between the Omani cultural diplomacy and the rest of the Arab world? Or can be the Omani cultural diplomacy serve as a role model for the other countries? It can be a role model. I mean, one, I'll, 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 I'll share with you just one example. The uh, Sultan Qaboos uh, College for, uh, to, to teach Arabic for non-speakers. It can be done anywhere in the world, very easily. You need to be committed to deliver the, you know, the, the uh, content and as an educational uh, entity and cultural entity as well. Students, when they come to this college, they stay over, I think, uh, 16 weeks, 16 weeks. But besides learning, they are also, uh, they enjoy living with the Omani families and they learn the culture. So not just studying in classes, but no, they live with families, Omani families and they learn the Omani culture. Why we are so tolerant, why we are so affected, affection. But that sort of thing, you don't study it in classes. You need to practice it, exercise it. So if you practice with the family, then you feel these people are genuine, these people are true. What they say, you know, they practice at home. So that may be the difference why we take uh, those initiatives very seriously, because we practice them. Could you tell us more about cultural diplomacy between Oman and, say, Eastern Asia? Because you focus a lot on Europe and, say, the Western world. Hmm. What about Oman and further east? Uh, for the, our initiatives, is global. I mean, the, the uh, uh, initiatives that we have uh, uh, fostered, uh, we have shared with a number of countries, east and west. For example, the uh, message of Islam from Oman have crossed almost uh, 30 countries from Brazil to Japan. We have uh, presented the, 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 or the, 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 made the exhibition in different countries. So it's not for West only, no. It's for all the world. It's one message, regardless where you deliver, it's one message for all, all, all different countries. Uh, we've we have, we've, we've uh, displayed here the exhibition in Korea. So that's uh, East Asia country, isn't it? Australia, Japan, besides, of course, Germany, France, United Kingdom, a number of countries. So it's all over the world. It's your message to the world. So it's one, mes one message. We are closer to Asia because we are part of Asia. And we have tight relations with Asia a long time back because we share the oceans, you know, uh, geographical location. Maybe we are more closer there. And we have influx of Asians also working in our country. So maybe that makes it a little bit uh, you know, special, mm -hmm. closer maybe. Yeah. But our message definitely is one for uh, everybody. Uh, do you have any advice for young people who want to push your career in the diplomatic or politics field? To be honest, I, I like the, uh, the setup here uh, when students are participating in it. I really wish that school boys will also attend this sort of uh, event, because you need to plant that in the children. You need it to grow, you know, in, the, in, in, in children, uh, because when it's absorbed by children in the early age, it will grow with them, and they will understand the cross-culture uh, benefits. Okay. And then you will immune them from bad things. Yeah. So right. one important aspect of cultural diplomacy is the education. Absolutely. And yes. Education starts. Proper education. Yeah, proper education. Starts early age. Exactly. This is where we should focus. Yes. So, 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Most welcome. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity.